Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and today is Get Ready With Murder. It is a weekly makeup and true crime series that I do here on my channel. So I will be putting on makeup and telling you a true crime story. Today we are going to talk about the eyeball killer from the early 90s in Dallas. All right, so we're going back to the 90s, actually 1990. Um, in December of 1990, a woman was found murdered. Her name was Mary Lou Pratt. Um, she was a sex worker in the area, and when she was found, she was 33 years old. Um, she was found with a um, lots of bruising, so she was beaten. Um, she was only wearing a t-shirt and a bra. She was not wearing, you know, bottoms and she was um, killed by being shot in the head. So when she was first taken in, the medical examiner was doing a routine check. Everything was, you know, as, you, as usual for a murder. Um, but when she got to examining the head and the face, the medical examiner found that the eyeballs of the victim had been removed and taken away. They were not recovered at the scene. Um, like nowhere to be found. They weren't hidden on the body anywhere. Somebody took this poor woman's eyeballs. It was noted in the case file that they were removed with like uh, medical precision. So this guy clearly knew what he was doing. So flash forward a few months later to February of now it's 1991. Um, another Dallas sex worker is found killed. Her name is Susan Beth Peterson. She was 27 and she was found on the same street that Mary Lou had been found on two months earlier. Susan was also shot um, as her means of death, just like Mary Lou. So. Um, she was shot, she was left on the same road, and also her eyeballs had been removed and taken away, um, just like Mary Lou. So at this point, the authorities knew that they had someone that they were calling a repeater. So exactly one month later, on March 10th, another woman was found dead. Her name was Shirley Williams. Um, she was also a sex worker. She was not found in the same spot as the other two women were, um, but she was also shot in the head. Um, and propped up. She was actually fully nude against a curb and her eyeballs were removed. This time, however, it was a field worker, not the an office medical examiner who realized that the eyeballs had been removed. So they found this was immediately, you know, put on the case with the other two women. So now that the police know that they've basically got a serial murderer on their hands in the area they are putting it out to the public and lots of tips are pouring in a lot of them of course are um, unusual totally unusable um, just crazy people coming in with things but there was one that they were actually kind of paying attention to her name was veronica rodriguez she was 26 years old and she was also a sex worker she um, told the police that she not only knew who the killer was, but that she saw Mary Lou Pratt be killed. So Ms. Rodriguez had had a pretty bad history with drug abuse at this point. So she wasn't maybe the most reliable witness, but the police did check into her story, even though they probably didn't 100% believe her at the time. Her story was that she and Mary Lou had taken a client together that they were gonna go with this man and, um, you know, have a threesome. She said that this man had um, become violent and had hit herself in the head with a, um, a gun and knocked her out. And when she came to, and they were out in like a field in Dallas somewhere. Um, but when she came to, she said she woke up just in time to see him shoot Mary Lou. So she like freaked out, um, of course, and ran to the nearest house that she could find. And that person let her in. And his name was Axton Schindler. And he was just a truck driver. At that time, the police kind of thought that maybe she was confused or, you know, had been on drugs. So she got the person that she thought was her savior confused with the person who was the actual killer. So they started looking into Schindler's background. Um, they didn't really find anything. I mean, he's a truck driver, so he works hard. Um, nothing really came up as far as violent history or anything like that. So he probably really was just the good guy that helped her. Um, but one interesting thing they did find was that the person that he was renting the house from, his name was Charles Albright. So looking into Charles Albright, they found that he not only owned the property that Mary Lou had been killed near, he owned a few other properties that were near the other dump site as well. 
And the police also got another lead from another sex worker. Her name was Brenda White. Um, she was kind of a veteran of the streets and she came forward and said that she had a client who also tried to kill her in a very similar fashion, but she kept mace on her and that's how she was able to get away from him. So she provided a description to the police and guess who he looked just like? Charles Albright. So they looked into the background of Charles Albright a bit and found some, you know, pretty interesting things. He was adopted as a child um, and his adoptive mother was very strict but also um, very nurturing of his, I guess, talents. Um, she gave him a gun when he was a teenager. Um, he used that gun, you know, in true serial killer style to kill a bunch of small animals. And in a very interesting kind of turn of events, instead of his mother, you know, maybe being a little concerned that he's out there killing small animals, he she enrolled him in a taxidermy course so he could learn to, you know, mount and stuff the animals that he's killing. And outside his love for, you know, stuffing animals, he also got into some mischief as a teenager, got caught for things like petty theft and aggravated assault, but he was still pretty smart. Um, so he graduated high school when he was only 15 and intended to go to college with an interest in um, pre-med and surgical studies. And he did start some pre-med training. Um, There's a few courses that I guess he could take when he was still 15, but he never completed them. And instead, that's pretty, um, got arrested for stealing and having guns on him. So he actually spent a year in jail. Um, after that year, though, he went to Arkansas State and actually did start studying pre-med. And then he got expelled from college for having stolen again apparently he's also a little bit of a klepto um so he was expelled and you know no more school for you so what he did was went back to his hometown um faked a couple of degrees and married his high school girlfriend so after a few years of just kind of lying ooh, of just kind of lying about everything stealing forging checks um teaching out of high school without any sort of degree or <laughs> certifications. Um, he got caught at all that stuff. He and his wife divorced um, and he just kind of moved on being kind of a scumbag. He eventually married a woman named Dixie in 1985 and he got her to completely support him. She paid all his bills. She took care of him, you know, cooked clean, did the whole deal. Um, and he said that he was he had a very early morning paper route that allowed him to help with the family. But in actuality, he was not delivering papers. He was out employing sex workers in the early, early morning hours. So Ms. Rodriguez and Ms. White were both able to pick out his photos from a photo lineup. Um, with that information and then finding out that he studied taxidermy, which would have given him the skills to remove eyeballs perfectly and precisely, um, he was arrested. So there wasn't a ton of physical evidence. There was, you know, the women who identified him in these photo lineups, but that's still considered circumstantial. Um, one piece of physical evidence that they did get was squirrel hairs. <laughs> So squirrel hairs were found on the body of Shirley Williams and squirrel hairs that matched the same squirrel were found in a vacuum in the home of Albright. That is some deep digging. Good job, crime scene investigators. The squirrel hairs were, that were present on her body as well as in his home, they would have been picked up at the crime scene. So that is the reason that they were able to use those as evidence in the case. So because most of the other evidence was circumstantial, he was only really um, arrested for and tried for the murder of Shirley Williams. His trial started in in March of 1991 and it concluded in December. Um, at that time, the jury did find him guilty of the murder of Shirley Williams and he was sentenced to a life sentence. So right now, Albright is in a psychiatric hospital where he's confined to. He's 84 years old. He still says that he is innocent. 
Ew. And that he's never touched a human eyeball. And that is the story of Charles Albright, the eyeball killer. Pretty crazy, huh? You know what? I just wonder, like, what did he do with the eyeballs? Because he took them. But they were never recovered. I just wonder where they are. Like, did he eat them? Or does he have, like, a stolen, like, hidden cache of eyeballs somewhere? Ugh. I pity the person who finds that jar full of eyeballs. Alright, you guys. And with that, I thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for a new Get Ready With Murder every single week. Alright, have a super great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye.